Okay, sir. All right. Okay, uh, so according to our course outline pun, we are at week three of our semester. So supposedly at week three, we should end our chapter one and starting with chapter four lah, uh, next week. So and we, if I'm not mistaken, Sazri would also have also informed me that he has prepared a video lecture for class two. Uh, to four to five C D C. Sorry, I forgot what class it is. But uh, supposedly, it, uh, he has already gone through until slide twenty nine, and therefore I assume you've uh, finished up on the legislations. Huh? So it's just now on more on the on the what do you call that the electrical energy regulation of 2008 so i'll continue this and if time permit most probably i'll touch a bit on chapter uh, chapter two slide 1.2 okay so i guess we should be able to start now class is already at uh, 55 people 54 55 people so i guess we'll start so uh <coughs> There's another, the last legislation that uh, would be highlighted by this course is the, the most recent one, which is the Efficient Management of Electrical Energy Regulations that has been gazetted in 2008. So basically, this is to support the uh, uh, the main sticks. Lah. If, uh, if you recall, there's a donkey. If you want the donkey to move forward, there should be a carrot and there should be a stick. So this will be the stick, uh, the carrot will be the, the the incentive that we have discussed a few weeks back. But this will be the sticks. Uh, right. And therefore, under this regulation, uh, this regulation is actually a supplementary regulation under Electricity Supply Act of 1990. So it complements the 1990 Supply Act and it was uh, implemented starting from 15 December 2008. I'm still unsure whether this regulation is being enforced or not because change of the government, again, when government changes, also um, the, not to say that the rule will be obsolete, no, it's just that the enforcement, whether the enforcement is still there or not, uh, it's up for debate, lah, depending on the, the direction of those who are in power. So supposedly this is under what you call that, uh, Kementerian Technology, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so, so far I have yet to receive any news on their directive, whether this energy management program is still being pursued or not. So, depends. We'll see how. Okay, so who does this legislation applies to? First being the suppliers. Second being consumers and the last one energy generators. So what does it mean by these three uh, category? So the first one energy suppliers is those who are being given a license or by the supply authority to supply electrical energy to any kind of installation. It, this this is not the MBA. This is most probably like a uh, IPP independent power provider like Malakoff or I, I only know Malakoff uh, because I'm not electrical. I'm, I'm also haven't been involved with any IPP. There are actually, if I'm not mistaken, there are more than 10 uh, IPP available in Malaysia, small scale, big scale. Uh, so these are the guys that generate electricity and they sold it to TNB. That's IPP. Eh? So, uh, if it's not TNB, then you fall under energy suppliers, lah, provided uh, you, uh, there's a category that is, I'll, I'll explain later. But under this regulation, regulation 5, you are obligated to submit information to energy commission in regards to your consumer energy consumption. Because uh, how else can the authority detect the consumer, right? So therefore, they need, 
the under this uh, under this legislation, there's not so much uh, explanation on you, uh, your domain under energy suppliers code scope, but more on your uh, to obligate you should the need requires for you to provide the information that the energy commission required lah. basically for audit and this can pertain to any kind of information or document in regards to the name and particulars of consumers that may uh, be required by the energy commission energy commission sederhana dari tenaga and then uh, we look into energy generator suppliers and generators is different thing eh? Kalau suppliers ni is uh, you sell to other people whereby generators is for own consumption only. So if you have, typically this would be heavy machinery punya industries lah. Contoh, uh, uh, for example, uh, steel industries. Uh, steel besi. Besi, they need to have, the furnace needs to have tons and tons of power to make, uh, to to control the temperature that can melt the steel almost 24 7 7 uh, 365 days a week because if they shut it down and then restart it the total amount of energy will be much bigger Sorry. will be much higher so typically they won't shut down their furnace maybe control it so that it doesn't uh, go, go to too cool of a temperature but typically it will keep on running 24-7, 365 days a week. So the amount of energy will be really, really huge. And therefore, typically, they will have their own generators uh, rather than burden the TMB with, uh, I mean, they will have, they will need some TMB uh, feed in line, but not so much that, uh, I mean, it's just to power up their lamp, the aircon and whatnot, but not so, but not to the production side. So, uh, for electrical energy generators, the, uh, it is being defined as any kind of installation that use, work, or operate a private installation licensee with a total net electrical energy generation not less than 3 million kilowatt hours. So, you can imagine uh, 3 million kilowatt hours. So, if you look at your TNB electricity bill for your house, typically it will be around hundreds, hundreds kilowatt hours. This is 3 million kilowatt hours. So you can imagine how many houses it typically use its electricity that if it's not using it, uh, if it, if they burden TNB, chances are TNB will be overwhelmed. Uh, just for them, 3 million kilowatt hours. Eh? So if they, uh, they got, they don't have uh, electrical generators in their building, which are they, are, they will have to pay almost a uh, few hundred thousand RM per bill per month. So, yeah, 3 million kilowatt hours for any period not exceeding six consecutive months. So, this is not uh, just one month. Typically, they will observe uh, six consecutive months, meaning uh, January to June, for example. So, if your if it's calculated for the six month your electrical energy consumption is three million kilowatt hours and above uh, then you falls under this category yeah. if your own consumption but uh, it's only maybe hundred hundred thousand kilowatt hours uh, in in total for this whole six consecutive month and uh, then you are not you do not fall under this uh, electrical energy generators category your, you would fall under uh, electrical energy consumers. So it is being defined as any installation that receives electrical energy from a licensee or supply authority. So you can get it from IPP or you can also get it from TMB with a total electricity energy consumption equal to or exceeds 3 million, uh, I think not exceeding 3 million kilo because if you exceed, you fall under generator. But for consumers, not exceed 3 million kilowatt hours as measured at one metering point or more over any period, not exceeding six consecutive months. So if they measured from January till June and your bill is around 3 million kilowatt hours, uh, then you fall under electrical energy consumers. Uh, sorry, not exceeding, it's actually exceeding. 
Actually, uh, I think I have to uh, rectify that. Uh, if you exceed 3 million kilowatt hours, you do not fall under consumer. You're still uh, energy generators, but the different different rule applied because typically you wouldn't be consuming that much energy. They, you wouldn't be using that much energy. So you you, you will not be served a warning letter lah from ST, Tenaga, or Energy Commission. If I I missed uh, I misinformed you. If you not exceed three million kilowatt hours for electrical energy uh, generators, if you have an installation, if you have your own generation, electrical energy generation, and you do not exceed three million kilowatt hours for whole exceed uh, for six consecutive months, of course you will not be served letters uh, it, Previously, I told you it, uh, you will be categorized as consumers. I'm I'm wrong. Sorry, wrong information. But it's more like uh, if you do not exceed three million kilowatt hours, you will not be for you will not be subjected under this legislation. Legislation basically, you're using your energy efficiently, basically. So you won't be you won't be served the letter or warning letter. But for electrical energy consumers, are uh, those who exceed three million kilowatt hours the same thing with generators. Ex nah, not exceeding six consecutive months. Basically, this legis like I said, this leg legislation is more like a stick. If you do not use your electrical energy uh, efficiently, Turhajaya Tenaga or Energy Commission have the rights to get a report from you because this, the, the legislation 2008 has been gazetted, so they have the authority lah, to enforce it. So basically, this legislation is so so that you don't uh, mismanage your. I mean, tak membazir lah pakai electric. Okay. okay, under Regulation 16, basically, uh, there are. I mean, if I'm not mistaken, there should be a few slides uh, that mention uh, denda. If you do not comply with this commission, but if I'm not mistaken, is it on a different slide? I'll double check later. But uh, under this legislation, 2008, uh, there's a regulation 16, which uh, you will be served a notification by the commission so that uh, you should take an action, which is described in this uh, presentation. So once Energy Commission has audited your company, and it shows, I mean, they are, when they audit, they do not send you any kind of uh, indication. Eh? They are randomly audit but by going through the energy suppliers so that they can observe. Uh, so that the reading is, I mean, not being fake. Eh? So they'll observe, or let's say, for example, uh, June to December, for example, they got the data from the energy supplier. And they found out that you did exceed Three million kilowatt hours. So what they will do is they will send a notification from uh, energy commission. Ah, will send a notification either by hand or registered post to your company. So upon receiving this notification, there are two. Is it two or three? Uh, uh, three steps that you need to do. The first being, uh, you have to comply by appointing or designating a registered electrical energy manager to carry out the function and duties under which we'll be going through later lah, at the installation. So you have to appoint a, a registered, eh? not, not just somebody, but a registered electrical energy manager. If you don't have that uh, somebody, you can hire from outside. Uh, typically, there are, there are a few of us there. And basically to make sure that the company has implement energy efficiency management so you have to appoint the first being you have to appoint can be it can be internal or external and then you have to submit a written confirmation meaning you have to prove to energy commission that uh, in the company we have uh, appoint the the energy manager uh, with a written uh, written confirmation uh, with uh, with the name and particulars of the RIMS or our registered electrical energy manager. I'll, I'll just call it RIMS uh, after this. 
because it's quite a long name, Registered Electrical Energy Manager. So I'll just call it REEM, R-E-E-M, with the date of expiry of his registration. I mean, there's no point of you appointing an electrical energy manager, but the uh, registration has maybe expired. He or she did not renew his or her uh, registration. So maybe because this is this is not because they want you to they want your money it's more on to keep update to keep uh, to, to make sure that the electric the registered electrical energy manager the rims is updated on the rules and regulations uh, being required by energy commission that's all so registration is important for them because in order for them to renew their license they have to attend a few courses to you know uh, to make sure they are up to date with the latest uh, progress and steps. Okay, and then uh, lastly is to submit an information regarding uh, policy. Policy is basically your commitment, high company commitment to observe efficient electrical energy management in the installation. The objective of efficient electrical energy management in your company, the accounts and document pertaining to efficient electrical energy management. So typically, if you have implemented electrical energy management in your company, you would have uh, all the appointment, all the meetings, all the recorded okay, minute of meetings and whatnot to show that not only you have set it up, you are the, the what do you call it? The energy management team is working on it to show to Tenaga that it is actually being enforced and it is being implemented. Not just in the names, but also because you have minutes of meetings. Minutes of meeting meaning it is being uh, delegated. The work is being actually being because everything is recorded in that meeting. So uh, should prove it. Should prove to Tenaga that you are taking the steps. And then uh, submit the report, Form A, I don't have a sample of Form A and Form B, but basically Form A is the declaration of the RIMS uh, to, uh, for the commitment to energy efficiency management. And Form B is the schedule of energy management activities that has been done in the installation. I don't have that forms, but uh, I, I think there's a few samples available in the slide. I think I'll try to get it if, if you're interested. To show to you for me upon B under section 16 of electrical energy management. And then if let's say the commission require additional information, uh, then to comply uh, with the two steps. And then next is the regulation seven for generator or consumer. Uh, yang tadi tu consumer dia. Uh, sorry, yang regulation 16 ni is more on action that you need to take after you have been served by the notification by the uh, commission, by the Suhajah Tenaga. And then uh, for under regulation 7, the next step is to, uh, but not the next step lah, basically uh, the due date lah. So regulation 7 is more on the due date that you need to observe. Uh, you need to uh, submit item 1 and 2 uh, not later than 3 months from the date of notice. So if you got a notice on end of January, by end of April, uh, everything has should has been submitted. You should uh, This is not impossible because item 1 and 2 is just about appointing and uh, forming a ta uh, task force lah, of uh, RIMS uh, management and submit confirmation that you have appointed it. So in three months, should be enough. For item three, uh, should be not later than 30 days after expiry of six consecutive months. So what does it mean is that once you have been served the notice, you have six months to comply for item three. And if let's say worst case scenario, there's issue in any of the item listed here, the objective, the policy, the, any kind of documents, 
mean or meeting whatnot from A and from B, you'll have an extra 30 days. So all in all, almost seven months lah. But the, uh, basically, uh, you you have seven months lah to comply with item three. To submit item three. And then after that, once you have submitted the uh, the the first time, uh, subsequent six months, every year, you have to submit item three continuously. So until the day that you have managed to reduce your electrical energy consumption less than 3 million kilowatt hours, then only then you will not have to submit because it shows that you have managed your energy efficiently. So typically, if you if you found out that uh, you have been audited and has been served a notice, uh, then you have to observe energy management until you reach less than 3 million kilowatt hours and only then will you be able to dismantle your energy management group even if you want to keep it on for maintenance for because once you have uh, once you have able to achieve the less than 3 million kilowatt hours chances are you will have you will have been able to save some uh, some bills lah. so in that sense even if you were to rehire the same person, if let's say you hire from external, uh, it will still be much more cost efficient rather than just leaving it uh, like that and then no maintenance and everyone back to normal using your electrical energy inefficiently and then being served again by the notice and then you have to re again rehire the team. So why not just maintain the team because you already uh, save the electricity bill if let's say you have to fork out extra money lah. then uh, at the very least the work is continuous and you will not losing then you will not lose that much money due to the ability to save from your monthly bill typically if 3 million kilowatt hours ni i would expect around few hundred thousand yeah, RM bill nak kena bayar every month so upah lima enam orang kalau gaji orang tu maybe uh, because you have to remember you can employ external and also internal so if internal typically you're already paying him or her gaji salary just pay maybe on top of bonus or something like that i don't think you'll miss out uh, you will be reaching hundred thousand a few hundred thousand lah every month to pay for that person it will be much less significant lah compared to paying your electricity bill a few hundred thousand okay so it's still a viable solution to just engage the same person okay so that is under regulation 7 basically on the submission date now. and then continuing regulation 16 uh, the definition and the function of uh, electrical en energy manager is being defined under regulation 16 uh, which is to audit and analyze first is to audit because in order for you to address problem you need to know the problem then only then you'll be able to set uh, to solve the problem efficiently lah, with the least amount of time so that so that is why the first thing is to audit first where is the company energy consumption is right now so once you have the data the numbers exact figures and only then will you be able to prove that uh, energy management has already been done and has already been achieved so first audit analyze and then once you have got the number to advise uh, the appropriate plan measures and then once the plan is in action to monitor the effective implementation of the plan and then uh, once uh, to, of course if you want to monitor you have to supervise lah, to make sure that everything is uh, being done as according to plan and then once uh, everything has been compiled, recorded, documented, you have to make sure it is submitted in a timely manner to the Energy Commission in order to avoid any penalty or uh, uh, but uh, you can not comply, but uh, not complying to the Regulation 7 mentioned earlier just now okay then we look into regulation 12 
under electrical energy management 2008 is it um electrical energy management efficient management of electrical energy regulations ha, saya sendiri pun tak hafal padahal dah banyak kali sebut dah efficient management of electrical energy okay so under this regulation uh, it is uh, it elaborates more on the computer person because computer person can become can be a substitute for your registered electrical energy manager provided uh, he took the courses lah. but typically if you have a computer person he can he or she can uh, you know uh, can be a substitute a good substitute for registered electrical energy manager rings in your company if you don't have one so basically for a computer person it should be not less than 23 years old uh, okay there are three categories uh, either you have a professional engineer ir ir ke ar ke, if i'm not mistaken for chemists i know for uh, uh, architecture there's but architecture is not uh, it's not uh, engineering background so it's not applicable here so professional engineer lah, typically IR lah, those, uh, the name can be at the front there, there's a IR, let's say Ali bin Abu. Uh, so that means, uh, and he has a rubber stamp with a circle rubber stamp that from BM Board of Engineers Malaysia, uh, then they will be professional engineer. Either that or he or she holds a degree in science, engineering, architecture also, architecture is also considered uh, me. So AR pun boleh terima lah eh. or it's equivalent and possesses at least one year of working experience. So I'm sorry for business. I guess you guys can't uh, be registered under computer person of course because you won't be korang bukannya yang main dengan machine pun bukannya korang yang uh, repair machine tu. So uh, tak perlu nak ni lah. Tak perlu nak ni lah apa uh, terasa sangat lah. Ni lebih kepada yang main machine tu lah sebab safety eh? because you don't want to buy a million a million of plus uh, price per machine and having somebody who don't understand how to operate it safely and efficiently then rosak okay so mestilah nak somebody yang tahu operate machine tu orang pun tak nak pening kepala nak belajar pasal machine tu baik upah orang je eh? so tak payah tak, tak, jangan nak terasa sangat lah ni lebih kepada safety eh? and then uh, either that or he or she holds a certificate of competency that has been issued by commission energy commission such as uh, electrical service engineer a wire charge man wire man uh, itu semua dapatlah uh, cg competency from uh, energy commission so either of these three can be considered as uh, apa nama competent person this is minimum requirement of course if you have uh, there are also are some other requirements being required for them to qualify as competent engineers or technician person uh, but uh, these are the main minimum lah the bare minimum requirements to comply with a competent person okay and there are, these are some of the uh, other extra requirement under regulation 12 which is to demonstrate knowledge of act and regulation uh, the energy commission may interview those uh, the appointed person as competent person to to ascertain his qualification uh, but there is no uh, requirement that the competent person need to attend energy management training course because it's more on safety so even though this is about energy management but uh, if you know the safe operation of the machine you can do whatever that you want with the machine lah. i mean you can maybe reduce the energy load or maybe or schedule operating energy. just by knowing the machine work around safely meaning uh, as long as you don't overburden the machine or don't underpower I mean, uh, what do you call that uh, basically not using the machine efficiently uh, i think there's no go, not going to be any problem uh, with the machine provided uh, you understand how the inner workings of the machine with uh, the working of the machine so 
uh, basically energy management training course is more toward it's more geared towards understanding acts and regulation and also normal practices uh. so as long as you're a computer person chances are you already know the competent uh, the the best practice it's just that you might need some uh, you might not know the reg uh, rules and regulation so uh, there's no requirement uh, for you to attend energy management training course provided uh, you know how to operate the machine efficiently Hold yeah. My computer is getting a bit hot. Sorry. Okay, uh, and then energy managers must account for other laws. Basically, uh, it's not just the laws of energy management as an energy manager. I know I'm saying a lot of energy, 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 but as an energy manager, regardless whether you're a competent person or a registered energy manager you must also account for other laws that observe safety uh, and also uh, 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 safe working space so this is a mandatory requirement basically regardless of any kind of energy management program that you want to implement safety is the foremost utmost uh, thing that uh, is being mandatory in any kind of uh, implementation so if the safety commission if the energy commission uh, audit your company and once you submitted all the measures that you want to take from uh, energy committee will advise you whether this is safe or not and whether you should do this or not to achieve the mandatory energy management activities required so if not then energy committee can still penalize you lah if you don't observe i mean what does it mean by safety for an example just because you want to save electricity bills you ask your worker to stand by 24 7 because to observe the because you want instead of you operate the machine during business hours uh, from 8 to 10, for example, uh, 8 to 5, for example. And because you want to observe electrical energy management, you decided that, okay, it's better we turn off this machine and then only operate that machine. And when business hours ended, we continue with the other machine and turn off the one machine that has been working till the morning. But you are using the same person, the same technician to stand by in case there's any problem, just to sit there, observe. So that is not safe because that person will get tired and mistake will be done and chances are it will cost life lah. and uh, money lah, of course so engineering committee will still be able to penalize you if you don't observe safety and health of the worker and also the machine being involved lah. Uh, health of the machine is more towards geared towards uh, your production lah, and kalau machine tu meletup nah, you nak produce apa kan so energy committee will advise you on that lah. So, again, uh, mandatory requirement, observe safety and health regulation. Okay, and then we have ASEAN Energy Manager Training. Uh, this is the one that uh, Malaysia has implemented for registered electrical energy manager under the technology. So, back in, I, I think, 2000 something, I, I can't remember the year, but uh, ASEAN, during ASEAN meeting has get together and agreed to combine their forces to recognize energy management, efficient energy management program. And they come up with ASEAN energy manager training that provide the certification to allow participation uh, from all discipline to become a uh, registered engineering manager. Uh, registered engineer electrical engineering manager so it is a management scheme but not so much as mlm or something lah lebih kepada uh, apa, technical specialist and to assist in technical and other specialists in energy management so it's not scheme scheme it's more like a certification program lah. okay so it takes into account provision of computer control so uh, Energy management, yeah, betul. Tapi, computer control tu, 
must be observed, must also be observed other than uh, safety and health but also computer control. That means tak guna awak save electrical energy tapi mesin meletup. Memanglah awak, uh, memanglah awak observe, oh, memanglah awak dapat save bil api. Tapi mesin meletup, awak nak bayar bil api yang awak save tu pun tak boleh. Sebab tak boleh produce. Kan? So, kena observe computer control. Energy Efficiency Managers through Energy Management Committee eh. Selalunya Energy Ma energy Efficiency Managers ni dia tak bergerak seorang-seorang. Typically they will have some committee to help and assist them in enforcing and also implementing. To ensure the provisions of computer control are complied with in all energy management activities. Uh, so again, dia kena ada committee. Not dia bergerak seorang-seorang. Jangan nanti bila you have your own company you appoint one person as energy manager and biar dia terkangkang seorang-seorang buat semua benda. Ha, memang silap lah. Takkan jalan lah your energy management activities ni sebab energy management activities ni it not involve only one machine tau. Typically it will involve the whole organization. So imagine one person kalau apa buat HR pun kena ada at least dua tiga orang bayangkan nak the whole organization nak control electrical energy tu seorang-seorang buat. Accounting pun at least satu department. How come apa, energy management yang menyebabkan activity the whole organization being held by seorang je. Memang tak logik lah kan. Unless of course your company tu maybe lima enam orang je. Ha, tu logik lah. Awak point ni tapi macam it's illogical lah for me to think a company of five to six person can consume electrical energy to 3 million kilowatt hours in six months uh, continuously. So, tipu sangat lah I think. Typically for a company that uses electrical energy in six months total of 2 million kilowatt hours, that will be a very big company and have their own department of, of variety of uh, department. So, uh, Typically, you'll have committee lah. You you need to con, uh, appoint one manager, energy manager, and uh, give uh, what do you call that authority for him or her to what such a committee uh, to to handle the activities lah. Okay. The registration of engineers and other legislation uh, also makes specific provision with the design and installation of buildings. So it's not just electrical energy manager, uh, not just electrical energy management, but also uh, design uh, of a building, basically to achieve uh, green building index, lah, yeah, GBI. Yang if you got 0% energy consumption, you will get this green building certification and recognized big, uh, as energy management uh, efficient building in the whole ASEAN. So not only electrical energy but also the design of the building is being considered under this legislation under ASEAN. This must also be complied with when making a recommendation or modification or extension to installation of the of a building. So if you want to do a renovation in your office that that maybe to cater to handle uh, energy management uh, element in that design uh, is also being provided in the training for ASEAN energy manager. Basically, they show you, uh, they can advise to you uh, this, this type of building, this type of design would allow uh, natural lighting, would allow natural cooling. So you don't have to install any kind of, uh, what do you call that, uh, air condition system yang mahal tu yang ada dia punya, kalau selalu building they have their own HVAC system uh, nama HVAC heating, ventilating and air condition system uh, that, that, will, that will be the one that has significantly consume most of electrical energy lah sebab anything that uh, involve uh, controlling or changing the temperature of certain things that physics, eh, physics kata Kalau nak ubah temperature or ubah any kind of keadaan, kena sebenarnya ayat ni lain lah tapi bahasa saya lah eh. Pemahaman saya waktu tu. Nak ubah sesuatu benda memerlukan modal yang banyak. Ha, tanyalah geng-geng LGBT nak ubah satu benda dia tu, ha, berapa modal dia kena kumpul untuk dia ubah tu. The same thing goes with physics lah. 
we uh, apa ni our temperature our comfort level nak ubah sesuatu tu memang you can complement kalau complement murah maksudnya awak ada apa nama a natural lighting you want to complement it with maybe a slight led panel floor untuk terangkan lagi sikit uh, that that will be much cheaper ataupun awak ada cooling system natural cool you allow for natural cooling and then maybe tambah kipas sikit ah uh, itu ya yeah, murah tapi if you're forcing something an atom to move to a certain position macam awak tak ada apa-apa natural light uh, natural cooling and awak pasang aircon typically that will be very very expensive or very very i mean the amount of energy required will be huge lah. so uh, sebab tu jet rocket jet nak gerak ataupun motor nak gerak laju minyak je laju je sekali tekan minyak tu 10 ringgit 20 ringgit 30 ringgit 40 ringgit uh, macam tu so if you force something typically you will have to pay for it lah in terms of energy and getting a, uh, and given the energy has been gazetted to be priced by duit in terms of RM uh, then lagi banyak lah pakai by duit And then uh, there's a MEPA. MEPA ni basically uh, Malaysian Energy Professional Association. Uh, it involve uh, if tadi yang computer person typically memang electrical or engineering. For MEPA, semua orang boleh. Orang pun boleh masuk. Uh, dia lebih kepada specialist to handle and manage the operation of energy management. So it can be a committee, it can be, I mean, uh, I'm not very familiar with MIPA and what the activities is but uh, it involves, uh, basically involves a lot of, I mean if you want to do energy management of course you have to also have uh, some accounting being done, any kind of law being observed and to allocate uh, workforce so you can get there if you join this MIPA maybe your newly appointed energy manager in your company for example and you want to start doing the work and you don't know how to start uh, try to get in touch with MEPA and they will be able to advise you not the machine specifically that you that your company use but the whole ecosystem to enable energy management uh, in terms of accounting uh, money uh, basically uh, laws and uh, to advise them who to appoint to advise you who to appoint to uh, in the committee of energy management so you may source uh. so you can get the advice from them and that is all for slide chapter one okay so we have gone through uh, energy manager legislation who is the computer person and uh, where you can get the advice is uh, from so basically if S comes it will typically ask you around this legislation of course uh, chapter one there's tons of theoretical part that uh, lecturers can ask you but uh, I, i'm not sure yet how the question will be because uh, it depends on lic whether she wants me to assist in the test or not but uh, Previously, uh, I did involve, but more just on one or two questions only. Lah. So I, so far now, have I have yet to receive any indication whether she wants still me, uh, wants me to do it, uh, or maybe provide some extra uh, questions. But typically, these are the questions uh, yang dia tanya. All the legislation ni masih dapat lah nak tanya sebab teori ya. A B A B A B je. But of course, uh, there will be some, I mean, tak adalah simple as apa itu Regulation 1994, tak lah. Adalah some tricks here and there. So make sure you not only hafal, tapi understand what does it actually do? How does it complement energy management program? Okay. So that you, bila pusing macam mana pun, uh, you guys would be able to know lah the answer. Okay, so uh, we've reach the end of chapter one okay saya nak touch sikit chapter two uh, in maybe 10 minutes time so for now kita take a break dulu 10 minutes and we'll continue at now it's 8 50 uh, at 9 lah kita continue
And after that, kita end our session today. Okay? Boleh? Ada apa-apa nak tanya ke? Boleh, Doktor. Alright. So, we'll continue in a bit. Uh, be seeing you at 9 o'clock.
Okay, can we continue? Are you guys in front of the PC? Can. All right. Can you give me a second. Okay, uh, this slide is not going to be long. I think it's uh, at the most is 20 minutes and then after that we'll be able to end our session for today, right? Then conclude our session. So uh, <clears throat> for this next session, I'll be explaining more on the definition and the role of energy management. Uh, just now we've looked into the legislation that requires you to appoint an energy manager and just so you know, energy manager can be anybody, just as long as uh, doesn't mean it has to be from electrical engineering background. Doesn't have to mean doesn't mean that it, he or she has some background in engineering. Doesn't mean that the one that have been mentioned earlier in regulation regulation sixteen uh, twelve is more on computer person. But for energy manager, it's different from energy uh, from computer person because energy manager is only those who has or it's just a post. It's, uh, if you, the owner of the company appoints you, even you as a bachelor, as a business admin, they can still appoint you. Just as, but they have to make sure that you join the training lah, or you can propose to him or her, your owner, your boss that. Uh, to allow you to join the energy manager training so that you know what to, uh, to, be to better do your job. Lah. So anybody can be energy manager. But uh, you have to understand that energy manager is the person who has been given authority by top management. Hold on. Oh, I it's reading. It's just my computer. Uh, by the top management to plan, lead, manage, coordinate, and monitor and evaluate the implementation of sustainable energy management within that organization. As sustainable energy management interrelates with several departments, uh, be it human resource, accounting, production, uh, engineering, the energy manager should report directly to the top management and cooperate with other concerned parties on matters related to sustainable energy management. Okay, saya membaca. I know you can also read it, but what it's trying to say there is that energy management program does not involve only you as an energy manager. You, uh, let's say lah, your boss appoint you as energy manager. All the activities pertaining to energy management does not falls under you. You are there just to uh, to plan and to supervise, but to actually do it, it takes the whole organization to work as a team, and it can be inter inter interdiscipline interdepartments, human resource, accounting, purchasing, because energy is being used by the whole organization, is being used by the whole organization. Ingat eh, bil api tu bukan dia ikut department. Bil api dia ikut organisation, ikut building. So kalau HR kata macam ni, bukan kerja aku ni. No, it is your job. You are consuming electrical energy or energy whatever energy that you're using that contributes to the total energy being used in that company. So if you don't uh, apa, agree to work with me, uh, then jawablah dengan boss. But boss, okay, first and foremost as an energy manager to the critical point being boss can support the owner of the company or whoever the biggest boss there is in that company or the board of director or whatever must have commitment in, in fact dalam uh, do, uh, previous slide dah mention dah there's a item number three now, item number three in regulation 16 if i'm not mistaken dah mention memang kena ada document yang being supported by top management so your work is being observed by the management. So kalau HR ke, selalu typically benda-benda macam ni yang unrelated to engineering lah, yang department yang uh, macam ni lah, yang akan selalu bising, bukan kerja dia, bukan kerja dia. So, uh, ni kalau you tunjuk kat dia, okay, boss suruh saya buat ni. Boss minta ni, minta ni, insyaAllah dia akan buat lah. InsyaAllah lah, tak tahulah kan. Kalau dia degil juga, tak tahulah. Tapi, typically, it is and uh, a concerted effort by a whole department, but not the whole department, not uh, the whole organization 
because semua orang dalam organisation tu pakai energy. Sikit ke besar ke tu belakang cerita. Yang penting nak masuk office dia kena buka lampu, buka aircon. Kalau dia memang major dia tu tak buka apa-apa, memang dia bekerja dalam gelap, ha, tu lain cerita lah dia tak nak ikut kan. Up to, up to him or her lah. Tapi kalau dia buka lampu, masuk office, ha, he or she falls under energy management punya scope. Tapi bukan kita nak suruh dia buat kerja, uh, suruh dia ni tapi adalah task-task yang dia kena buat. Not 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 to say will intervene dengan dia punya kerja lah ya. Nah, okay. Kita, okay. And then uh, top management shall ensure that responsibilities and authorities of the energy manager are defined and communicated with the organisation. Uh, again, to show support to the energy manager. Of course, energy manager ni typically even though ideally it should be appointed to somebody who has uh, some sort of uh, recognition by the whole organisation. Maknanya orang yang respect lah. Tapi typically biasalah benda-benda macam ni bos-bos akan bagi yang muda-muda yang baru masuk ke company semua tu and to show that uh, they have the authority, the energy manager have the authority to enforce energy management. Top management kena tunjuk support by communicating with the organisation. Top management akan beritahu, okay, cik ni ni ataupun puan ni ni ni, ni ataupun cik ni 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 adalah uh, uh, those yang akan involved dengan energy manager and therefore all the organisation should observe his or her punya guidance. Therefore, the energy manager will be the single most important individual in driving energy management towards success. So, energy manager will be the focal point lah. Actually, energy manager doesn't have to be one single person. It can be a group of a person that has attended, attended the training. Typically lah, selalu dalam community energy management, akan ada dua orang energy manager atau tiga orang depending lah tapi ada je yang buat seorang kalau size company dia tak besar mana but typically you will have a committee lah and uh, that committee will appoint uh, anybody else yang dia deem uh, apa nama necessary to attend the, the training of energy manager to get that certification to further enforce and make sure in case lah yang energy manager quit ke apa ke at least ada backup and the energy manager must be one of the high level management people. Uh, it is advisable even though you not point somebody yang muda pun, make sure it is from the higher level energy uh, management people. Maksudnya, uh, it doesn't mean uh, apa, that one person, I can be as a backup or maybe uh, apa, the third or fourth person pun tak kisah yang penting, must be one of the high level management people so that uh, authority is not being challenged lah. So it can be at the very least manager level lah. Uh, not somebody yang baru masuk, tra practical trainee yang memang tak ada siapa yang akan lah. Tapi kalau at manager, le manager level, even though department lain, even though different department uh, has some uh, authority over or communicating with other department to make sure that the, apa nama, the, uh, the driving of energy management is successful and sustainable. Okay, so this is the structure that you can use to appoint and incorporate energy manager in your organization. Structure A, you can appoint one single person dedicatedly to perform the role of energy manager. It can be independent uh, outsider, external or internal. But uh, basically, he doesn't do, he or she doesn't do any other works, just specifically energy management activities. Lah. Or structure B, you can appoint to somebody that already in that in your organization that is performing uh, other tasks, like for example, a HR manager. And you appoint him uh, because you found out that HR may be relaxed, skip, apa, tak tahu lah, eh. and you found him to be available to perform as energy manager. Pun boleh. So, dia ada salary, maybe tambah sikit lah as a carrot to, you know, to bagi motivation sikit lah untuk dia perform his job as energy manager. Pun boleh, diterima juga. That is under structure B. And then finally, structure C, the business owner him or herself yang become the energy manager. Lagi bagus sebab dia paling atas sekali. InsyaAllah semua orang dengar cakap dia. Of course, dia pun mesti for, for you, 
as a business owner, you would be, I think, would be very inclined towards saving electricity bills if your electricity bills are a lot more than $1,000. Uh, that will be the cost capital of uh, running your company, right? So, dapat reduce that uh, without any kind of impact towards your production will be very attractive to you. So, why not you as the owner or one of the executive become the energy manager? Ni lagi bagus lah, paling bagus, so you see. This shows that memang top management nak, tak payah nak announce-announce lagi dah. Memang you dah ada owner, memang you dah ada top executive, then memang for the data. Okay, so uh, this is uh, one of the example of structure A, structure A, uh, where the energy manager is dedicated person. Dia memang buat kerja dia energy manager dia, tak ada buat kerja lain, tak ada buat maintenance, eh, tak ada buat HR ke, tak ada buat accounting ke, tak ada buat apa, so memang dia dedicated energy manager. Or this one is a structure B, where the same person doing another job is also the energy manager because maybe at your company it was found that the one that is consume much of the energy is just the equipment so you can focus more on operating that equipment only so might as well just appoint the plant manager to make sure that the equipment is being addressed accordingly lah, being apa, used efficiently so Nobody knows the plan better than the plan manager. So might as well just appoint him or her. Uh, so this, uh, typically this company uh, have done their homework, have monitored the energy consumption and shows that 90% of energy being used it is, is typically the is just coming from the plan. So all the other department most probably wouldn't have any uh, contribution, significant contribution towards the monthly electricity bill. So yeah, uh, you can neglect the other departments. So this is structure B. And then uh, the responsibility of energy manager. Okay, for this one, uh, it's a bit, again, uh, still dry. So I'll prefer to continue with the next class and decide we are quite ahead of schedule in terms of lecture so I may need to open up, pace our progress progress lah, uh, accordingly so that we don't uh, adalah nanti kalau tengah-tengah sem mengangal semua orang kan and saya pun tak nak banyak sangat bagi uh, assignment to you guys considering apa nama korang pun ada subject lain lagi kan so Kita pace ourselves lah with the lecture. So uh, for today, I guess uh, that's, that is all that I want to cover. If there is any question, please. Do you have any questions? 